Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, uh, we are in our 11th week since announcing dry docking. And today we're going to talk about the specific type of dry dock we're going into and what it means to fleet the ship. Uh, we've mentioned that in a number of videos, I've explained it a little bit, but uh, that's probably what we're getting the most questions about right now. So, in the past, we've gotten to visit and film museum ships when they were in a floating dry dock, which means essentially it is another vessel. You sail your ship into this other vessel that's partially submerged, and when you pump the wing walls, that other vessel rises to the surface and it brings the little symbiote ship inside of it up with it. We got to see that on board USS Slater at Cadell Shipyard. Uh, the battleship Texas has done something similar. Another thing we got to see was a ship lift. When we visited the Coast Guard Cutter Taney at the Coast Guard Yard in Baltimore, uh, they essentially pulled the ship into an elevator so they could then pull the ship around with like a, a tractor essentially in this parking lot that they had there at the Coast Guard Yard and position it so that they can get multiple ships out of the water at one time. New Jersey is going into an older style of dry dock. This one is called a graving dock, and it's probably the oldest style there is, uh, with the exception of a uh, marine railway style, which is uh, essentially you just pull the ship up onto the shore. We're not gonna try that with a ship this big. So as ships get larger, you basically dig a big hole in the dry land so now you've got your shore coming in. And then it comes back and forms a space where you can sail a ship into. Make sense so far? Once you have blocked that entrance, you can then pump out all the water that's inside. So the order of operations for New Jersey when she goes into dry dock number three will be she gets towed into the dry dock. She gets positioned over the blocks and this will be done by passing lines from the ship's hull to the wing walls around the caisson where there will be capstans, cranes, people uh, to pull her into position. The tugboats can't come with us into the dry dock. It's not big enough for everyone. Once the ship is more or less in position, a tugboat will pull a caisson and block the entrance to the dry dock with that. That's what's going to be the door that keeps the Delaware River from coming into the ship. So when the, the dry dock is flooded, you can pull the door and take it out. When the dry dock is uh, needs to be drained, you tug the door in and block the entrance. Once, once the dry dock is now sealed on all four sides, the three sides of the land and the caisson blocking the riverside, you can start to pump the water out. As you drain that water down, the ship is going to get very close to setting on the keel blocks. At this point, divers are going to go down to look at the ship. Iowa-class battleships are heaviest at the stern. And even though we're going to try and uh, reduce our trim by pumping water into the forward tanks, so that instead of 10 feet of trim, we get down to, uh, it'll have to be less than five feet of trim. Hopefully we'll get closer to two feet of trim so that there's no moment of pivot when we drop the ship down on the uh, blocks. The diver's gonna go down to the aft part of the ship and he's gonna look at the aftmost blocks, which are numbered from the first ones because that's where the ship's gonna touch down first. He's gonna guarantee that we're sitting the ship down at the right place and she's centered on the blocks. Once he's done that, reposition the ship, and put her down the rest of the way, but we'll still keep uh, a fair amount of water in there. At, at that point, the diver will go down and make sure that, uh, yeah, the ship is completely down and touching the blocks. We don't need to put wedges in there. Uh, we're particularly worried about the bow forward of frame 50. We know that when she was out of the water in Long Beach in the 80s, uh, that there was about two inches of rise just because of how light that part of the ship is and lightly built. So we're expecting to see a gap there between the, the keel blocks. And 
She'll settle down onto the blocks when we drain the water away, but we wanna make sure it doesn't bend the ship too fast. Now, once everything's shored up the way we want it, then we drain the rest of the water out. And this is great. Uh, we paint the ship, paint the ship, paint the ship. Love is good, except the ship is sitting on 306 four-ton keel blocks. The area where the ship is sitting on those blocks cannot be blasted and it cannot be painted. The blocks are blocking it. So that is why you have to fleet the ship. What fleeting the ship means is we fill the dry dock again and we get the ship floating and we bump her two feet. Once she's been bumped two feet, and I guess she goes two feet aft uh, in this scenario, that will expose half of the uh, area that was previously blocked. When the Navy was doing these ships, they would fleet the ship twice. She has three blocking plans. Uh, each one moves the ship two feet to get her off the blocks. And doing that means that you're not setting any of these main uh, sea chests, the, the big induction valves, big openings in the bottom of the ship on those blocks. And that's why the uh, docking plan here lists all of the through hull openings on the ship and their positions. When Missouri dry docked back in 2009, they removed one of the 306 blocks, uh, had an engineer do, do a study, remove one of the blocks, so they only had 305, and that allowed them to only bump the ship once. And I assume they went from blocking position one to three, something like that, so they're moving the ship four feet in one go. And that way, they're getting entirely off of those blocks in one bump and they can paint the entire ship. We're gonna look at getting an engineer to do something similar for us. Because draining the dry dock, paying for a diver to go in there and make sure we're in the right place, reflooding the dry dock, these are incredibly expensive. They're, they're some of the most expensive parts of this project. Uh, some museum ships don't fleet the boat. They just put her in a different docking position every time they dry dock her uh, every 20 or 30 years. This is a once in a lifetime thing. I don't, I don't trust that my successor's successor's successor several generations down the line is going to remember what docking position we use this time around. Um, so we are looking to raise the money to do it all in one go. And we're, we're gonna do the math to make sure we, can only, we only have to fleet the ship once. So we're still being frugal with that money and not spending it on two fleetings. This will also help our system of coatings adhere better. There is a recoat window for when you've put down a coat of paint, uh, you're supposed to put the next coat down that borders it or is on top of it within a certain period of time. And that differs based on the product. But uh, if we're bumping the ship multiple times, then we've got to spray and then we've got to put on a system of coating. So maybe we're putting down one coating today and then it's got to set for a certain period of time before you can recoat the next time. Well, if we're doing this multiple times, well, now our, our recoat window is being pushed out days, weeks, hopefully not months. We're not going to be there for months. Uh, but that may cause the coating to not be as successful and effective as we want it to be, which again is a problem because that's going to be our entire protection underwater for the next 20, 30 years. We have no idea. Hopefully the museum will be in a position to fund raise dry docking the ship in 20 years. We weren't 10 years ago, so it's over 30 years for us. I can't guarantee that it will be, I can't guarantee that things will be in a good position in 20 years. I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, so we wanna get the whole underwater haul in one go. And so that's what fleeting a ship or bumping a ship is. You're picking her up and you're moving her a couple of feet and then dropping her on the blocks again. And this way you can access the entire underwater hull. So we are going into a graving dock with a case on as the door, and we're going to fleet the ship at least one time. In future videos, as we've gotten further with our engineering studies and everything else, I should be able to uh, give you more information. So stay tuned. Every Wednesday night at 7 uh, Eastern time, we will post another video about our progress in dry docking the ship. If you've got any other questions about the work we're doing, be sure to drop them in the comment section down below and we'll address them in future videos. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum and our major dry docking effort. 
You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us in the channel. Thanks for watching.